the iPad Pro is an extremely powerful machine. And whilst you can use it by itself, the magic really happens when you add accessories to it. Sorry about my rough voice at the moment. Bear with me. It's when you add accessories that you really make this tablet more useful. Whether you are an artist, a photographer, an office worker or a creator, you're always going to need to add accessories to the iPad to help you get on with your day. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech reviews and I'm here every week. It's another jam packed video today with timestamps here to help you navigate the content with some accessories covering Bluetooth accessories, storage options, USB and Thunderbolt hubs. There are many options here to suit every budget and a couple of options that I think really complete the iPad Pro experience. Starting with this stand, which is also a hub from Satechi. I'm a big fan of products that solve more than one problem. And in this case, this stand solves multiple problems. This hub is great whether you are at a desk or on the go. I love how uncluttered the setup is with this option. If you're using the iPad with an external Bluetooth keyboard, for example, this stand would work great for that. They have just released this stand and at the time of recording, it retails for $99. I think this will be a very popular product. It has a thick enough base to hold the iPad in landscape orientation and one question I got on Twitter was whether the USB-C connector is long enough to still reach the Thunderbolt port even with a thick case and the answer is yes I am using this fairly thick case right now and the cable reaches fine I know this feature may not be to everyone's liking but I love how the ports are out of the way and in the center which is nice for cable management you have the USB-C charging port so you can plug the iPad charger into it and that will charge the iPad through that main connector. The connector itself is designed with space in mind, taking as little space as possible, which is great if you're traveling or maybe you just want to keep your setup minimalistic. It supports up to 60 watts, which is great for the iPad Pro. The iPad charger itself, you know, comes with only 20 watts anyway. I think it would be nice if it was 100 watts so you could charge a MacBook Pro, for example, but you could still charge a smaller laptop with it as well if you want to simplify your setup in that way. The HDMI port supports 4K at 60Hz, which is basically good enough for most monitors. Of course, if you're using a 5, 6 or 8K monitor, this option is probably not going to be good for you. But remember, the iPad itself doesn't yet have enough apps to support external displays, so this option really isn't going to be crucial right now. You get a single USB Type-A data port, which is okay for connecting external storage like SSDs for example, but the transfer speeds are around 30 megs per second on my SSD here, which normally supports about 800 megs per second. So it'll be okay for transferring some photos and documents, but not so great for larger video files for example. That is not very fast at all, but for some small files, this is totally workable. Then you have this neat little feature, which is the audio jack, remember them? For those of you who have studio monitor headphones, like this one here from Biodynamic, and prefer that instead of listening to Bluetooth headsets and earbuds, this option is great for that. It is just audio out, not microphone. So it's really cool if you're editing podcasts, videos, or simply listening to music and watching content. And finally, you have the SD and the micro SD slots. These are the ones I use the most for transferring photos from my camera to my iPad, so I can edit them in Lightroom, for example. To give you an idea, this is exactly what I did for the thumbnail for this video. There are many things I could talk about covering this product, but in the interest of saving you time, here's a quick fire version of it. It operates very cool temperature wise, it doesn't get hot at all, even when I was really pushing it. It's sturdy enough, but if you are not using a keyboard, it's okay to type on, but this is not good for angry typing. Let me show you. As you can see, if you're bashing the iPad anywhere near the top, the whole stand will tip. But I'm being really forceful here, guys, so take a deep breath, then type. Having the hub at the back means it's great for aesthetics, it could be fiddly if you're constantly swapping things in and out. There's only one USB-A and that could be a problem for some people. For me, I try to go Bluetooth as much as I can, so that port is always free if I have to plug something older in. The size and the folding design is fantastic for traveling uh, or working at a cafe. Very light, extremely well built in aluminum. It goes really well with the iPad design. It is no surprise that Apple themselves sell Satechi products on their website. This hub is so well designed that it looks like something that Apple would build. Compact, sleek, portable, and it's gonna suit many people in different situations. Great piece of kit. Before we talk about the next item, I'm getting close to 100 videos on this channel, guys. Some are not worth watching, I'll give you that. I'm still learning, but some are pretty good. So if you like my stuff, it would be awesome if you subscribe to my channel. And don't forget the bell. I'll explain that later. It's a thing on the channel. Sorry to interrupt your flow. What is this device? Oh, this is the Pitaka Omnilite charging station. Of course, you definitely need more chargers. 
Uh, Farty, reduce sarcasm level to three. Only because you asked me so nicely. I will replace you with Alexa or Siri. Okay, level three it is. Fascist. Are you done? So, what are you gonna do with this charger? I'm getting rid of some cables in my life. It's amazing. That's quite smart. Unusual from you. Really? Really? I always prefer Siri and Alexa, to be honest. Right, guys, this is the Pitaka Air Omni Light Charging Station. This thing can charge up to six devices at the same time. It's a bit like a Swiss Army knife. That's the best way I can explain it. it. Has lots of little tricks up its sleeve. Whether you're using this at home or when traveling, check this out. I can charge my big iPad here, my Apple Watch, my S21 Ultra, and a multitude of earbuds as well. And it has this little hidden compartment here for your condoms. And if you're really busy and active like me, not just one condom, but SD cards as well. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I know. Or jewelry as well, you can put jewelry in here. This comes in at about $130 at the time of recording. And as always, I've put the links down in the description for you. I love Pitaka products and reviewed a few of their smartphone cases in the channel as well. So when they reached out about this product, I was really intrigued. I mean, as Farty said at the beginning, I probably don't need another charger, but something that clears up the mess of cables in my life, yeah, that I need. I personally have this by my bedside table, but you can totally have it on your main desk or at a central location in your house so you can share it with your family as well. It is a great looking device. And if I'm not mistaken, let me check. I think they do it in different colors as well. Yeah, they do this in different colors as well. You won't look out of place in your home. I quite like the carbon fiber style, so I'm pretty happy with this one. One slight issue with this version is the fingerprints, but they clean up quite easily. You can charge up to six things at once as i said you will wirelessly charge your iphones at 7.5 watts and android devices at 10 watts if you're in a hurry then i recommend that you use the wired option but for me this is more of an overnight charging station or at a desk stand really it doesn't get hot it uses heat dissipating materials which is great it's absolutely silent so you can have it in your bedroom with no issues that's how i've been using it the charging brick is a beefy boy which is expected given how much it can do but i never noticed it getting too warm even after charging multiple devices at once the USB-C connector is 18 watts, so perfect for the iPad. And you can actually still charge a small laptop as well using this charging station. When you get the iPad Pro, you know you're kind of constrained to the Bluetooth and the single Thunderbolt port. Whilst extremely powerful, it is just one port. So I have a few more options here for you, which will let you make the most of that connection. I'll preface this by saying this Thunderbolt port is very powerful, so by using a USB hub, you're really not taking advantage of that power. But I appreciate that a lot of people already have USB accessories and other people may not need that Thunderbolt accessory right now. If you do, then I suggest you skip to the Thunderbolt hub section, which I've got here as well. I'll start with a couple of options here from this brand called Uni. This option is for those of you who like a very minimal setup, but also for those who are on the road all the time and need something to transfer data or quickly connect to an external monitor while you're away. I have the 18 one option here and the 16 one as well. Like this Satechi stand, this only supports USB type A for connecting uh, external storage, which is a shame as it does have an additional USB-C port, but what this doesn't deliver in data transfer, it delivers in power with 100 watt power delivery, so there's enough here to be able to charge your big laptop. Another great feature of this UniHub is that it comes with an ethernet port. So if you're someone who can't rely on Wi-Fi speeds, for example, or you're streaming, when you need that internet speed to be as reliable as possible, with this hub, you get one gig ethernet port, which is pretty good. It's not 10 gig, but it's pretty decent, especially if you're on the road where you're not, you know, you're not likely to experience Wi-Fi 6 speeds anyway. For something so small, that's pretty awesome. This one here is the Lentian USB-C standing dock. A really cool little stand, looks great on the desk, is a bit like the Satechi option, but in a different design. And a different budget too, coming in at $49.99, uh, at the time of recording of course. But if you use my discount code in the description, you get another 20% discount. In fact, that 20% discount is for any products on the website, so you're welcome. I don't actually get kickback on these ones. Uh, if you buy through the website, and I don't mind, it's a great hub. Don't let that budget price fool you. This is a very convenient hub. It comes with two USB 3.0 ports, an SD and micro SD dual card reader, and also a 3.5 mil audio jack. The SD and micro SD slots can be used simultaneously. And I mentioned this because not all hubs allow that. The HDMI port on this supports 4K, but only up to 30 Hertz. So, you know, it's a good video output, but it's not as good as the others. The trick that this one has up its sleeve is the USB-C charging port as well, which it has 100 watt pass through 
to your main device. So depending on your situation, you could alternate between charging the iPad or your big laptop. That way you could have less cables on your setup uh, to worry about. And by the way, all of these accessories so far were sent to me uh, free of charge. The next products in this video were all purchased by myself. I don't do paid reviews, uh, but I do pick and choose who I work with. I spend quite a bit myself on gear, so sometimes it's nice that brands like this uh, want to work with me and they send me stuff. The good news for you is you're hearing my honest opinion whether I bought it or not. This next accessory is a great find for me. This is the Keychron Key One V4 keyboard. It is a low profile mechanical keyboard. It's not just an accessory that you can use with the iPad, but you can actually connect this up to three devices and quickly switch between them. So you could have the iPad, a Windows laptop and an Android phone, for example, all connected to it and using just one keyboard. It is a great keyboard for Mac users because the layout is basically the MacBook Pro layout with very minor differences. It's built like a tank, but at the same time, very light. You could totally carry this around with you. It has a great battery life with 2000 milliamp battery, officially state 35 hours of usage for me. That translates into about four to five days, depending on how busy I am. It feels really nice to type on this keyboard and I'll shut up now for a few seconds so you can actually hear it. I cover this in a lot more detail in my full review of this keyboard, but to keep it short, these switches are not hot swappable. You can change the keycaps, but not the switches themselves. But if you want hot swappable switches, go for the K3, which is a bit smaller uh, than this one, but gives you that flexibility when it comes to customizing your switches. I do find that for longer sessions, having a wrist pad will help a little bit uh, to make it even more comfortable. I can't recommend this keyboard enough. As I said, there's a link to my full review at the end of this video if you want to know a bit more about it. Like many manufacturers out there right now, OWC seem to have been impacted by the chip shortage, uh, so there could be delays in getting stock. I managed to get this one from someone on eBay, and I'm still waiting on stock for the bigger dock that they have. With this Thunderbolt 4 hub, you can add five additional Thunderbolt devices in a daisy chain setup, so very, very powerful. If you're using it with a single display, Thunderbolt 4 supports uh, resolutions up to 8K at 60Hz or 4K at 120Hz. If you're connecting two monitors, this will support two 4K monitors at 60Hz, which is amazing for dual monitors. As always, I'll leave links to all of this gear in the description for you. With iPadOS 14.6, uh, the speed wasn't quite there as per my previous video on this, but I can confirm that with iPadOS 15, there's a considerable improvement already and the software is still in beta, so it's very promising. I'm now getting much faster transfer speeds when using my Thunderbolt 4 hub uh, to move large files around. From a design perspective, I love how small this hub is and the fact that it has three Thunderbolt 4 ports. Most of the hubs out there have only two, all backwards compatible, so it gives you lots of flexibility as well for all accessories that you may want to connect to the iPad. On the front of the hub, you get a USB 3.2 Type A port, but not the cheapo version that Apple gives us on MacBooks and Mac Minis. This here at the front is a 10 gig port, so provided you're using the right 10 gig cable, this is as good as it gets for USB Type A, guys. My main issue with this hub is this cable here at the front, which is the main cable that connects the hub to your laptop or to the iPad. Firstly, I think it should be at the back to, to give you kind of a better cable management situation. But secondly, it is quite loose and OWC sells these little clips so that it doesn't, doesn't come out. But I think it should just be better connected. The other thing that I don't really like is the actual power brick. It's huge. So you're not gonna be able to move this around with you. It's, it's for a desk setup, really. Now, these two accessories for me are the stars of the show, really. Of course, I'm talking about the Apple Pencil and the Magic Keyboard. You may have heard me say before, I was really looking forward to the Magic Keyboard, probably more so than the iPad itself. It is not the cheapest accessory, but I really love how close it resembles the MacBook Pro keyboard, especially at the 12.9 version. It made it really easy for me to get more work done on the iPad because of that familiarity with the Mac keyboard. The trackpad is very responsive. It's very clever how he accelerates slightly different than other trackpads on the market. It's those small details for me that make it stand out and ultimately be worth the investment. The magic keyboard and pencil is what makes me take the iPad Pro to work every day as I know I can go outside for example for a bit and continue to be productive. Whether I'm just taking quick notes whilst in a meeting or just jotting down an idea for my next project. 
The Apple Pencil is great. The way it responds to pressure is really cool. I gotta be honest, it's quite slippery at first. So your handwriting might look like a doctor's handwriting. Is that still a thing that doctors can't handwrite? Anyway, you could in theory use one of those screen protectors that resembles paper, but I really don't like compromising on this beautiful display as Apple intended it to be. But that's just my personal preference, of course. Thanks for hanging out with me. I think you really like these videos right here where I cover even more iPad accessories. We'll see you and your smiling faces on the next one, hopefully with a better voice from me. Bye. She get to the cash, she wants.